110.22, identification of disconnecting means. This change, again, I'm talking about something you don't know what I'm talking about. We're going to go look at it and maybe go back later on. The change makes it clear that, talking about disconnecting means, that where the purpose of a disconnect and the location of the circuit source of the disconnect is not evident, identification of the purpose and the supply circuit location must be provided at the disconnect. Let me kind of explain this here. Okay, this is interesting with a change. Here's what it says, each disconnect. So everywhere in the code they talk about a disconnect, and there's like a lot of times. Mario, you're gonna say something? Just this rule applies to other than dwelling units? So just stating that before we get started? Well, maybe I should have read my title, yeah. and I should have said that. <laughs> so other than dwelling units, okay. You know what, Mario, make it a note, and we talked about this. I want to make a PI and change all of those other than dwelling unit requirements because the electrons don't know the difference. Why would a homeowner of all places not be able to know where the source of power is to turn this off? Why do I not have all the other requirements for other than dwelling units? And, and so I'm going to make the effort to globally go in and, and give a substantiation, Vince, like you said, I'm going to have to do something that's going to be, that can be compelling, you know. And it, it might take three or four code cycles, and I can get a couple people say, yeah, you're right about that, and slowly get it where this is an application. I mean, there, there can be an exception, but we don't have to have it for industrial control, you know, maintenance and qualified people, that kind of stuff. So, but right now, Mario, this does not apply to dwelling units, other dwelling units. Each disconnect, other than a, not a dwelling unit disconnect, must be marked to indicate its purpose. That was added a few code cycles ago, and I thought that was great. And now it says include the identification. You say include the identification of the circuit is what it said before. So you had to know, oh, this is uh, the identification is at panel, whatever the case. And include the location now of the circuit source that supplies the disconnect unless located in a range so that the identification and the location of the circuit source is evident. Mario. Yeah, and this is a great change for big buildings. You have an electrical room and you just, and you have a disconnect in the seventh floor and you have an electrical room in the third and the fifth floor and you just put the, the panel number, you identify that disconnect, but now you have to also say located in the third floor electrical room. You have to add the location of the source. So that was, I was, as I was reading, I was trying to think, let me read this again, and let me tell you where I was at. I was wondering, do I have to identify the circuit and the location? Okay, I have to identify the purpose, what circuit it's connected to, hey, it's on the fifth floor. Yep. Panel, oh, Brian, you gonna say something? Well, I think um, before we get too deep here, we kind of just leapt off the edge when Mario said other than dwelling units. Yeah. Why don't we jump into the code for a minute? Let's actually look at the rule because, um, and, and Brian, you're gonna have to switch to, uh, for me to this rule, please. Okay, so before we get too far into this conversation, we kind of glossed over the first sentence, which is, each disconnecting means shall be legibly marked to indicate its purpose unless located in a range so the purpose is evident, period. Okay. That's a requirement. Right. It doesn't matter whether you're in a dwelling unit or whether you're in an industrial building or a high rise in other than one or two family dwellings, not any dwelling unit, but one and two, the marking shall include identification and location of the circuit source that supplies a disconnecting means unless located in a range so the identification and location of the circuit is evident. It, with the marking shall be sufficient durability to withstand the environment involved. So my point in bringing this up is this. So we, have, we have a requirement and then we have additional requirements. They all have to be identified to their purpose, okay? However, you get into a bigger facility, there's a lot more scenarios where you need additional identification. Um, and so what they're saying here is, hey, uh, marking shall include identification of the location of the circuit, because you could have 30 panels in the facility. Um, the source that supplies the disconnecting means, unless location is arranged so it's evident right next to each other, and we'll see that in our graphic in a minute. Um, and then have marking that's sufficient, uh, sufficient durability to withstand the environment. 
Okay, here's what I don't understand. I understand what I said, and I understand what you said, but I'm trying to find out that what we said says it. What I mean is this part. So help me with the words. I want to know where it tells me I have to tell you that it's panel L7 circuit 6. Just not where the panel is located. What's the word in there that tells me that it's panel L circuit 6? Which, okay, so that's going to be look at the slide again. That's going to be the additional requirements in other than one and two family no, dwellings. No, 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 I'm looking at the word. The marking shall include the identification. And location of no, the no, circuit no. source. But, but, but I'm trying to, give me the words that's a panel L7 the circuit, circuit source. Six. Which one? The circuit source right here. I, location of the circuit source. The location of the circuit source. That sounds to me like that's on the fifth floor. That supplies the disconnecting means. So, but so, where does it say it has to say panel? Well, the circuit source is the breaker in the panel, in the floor, in the electric room. Like. Include the identification and location. Okay, so the word identification and location is combined circuit together. Circuit 11 panel and panel seven, P. Circuit 6 right. on the fourth the, floor. The first sentence says you have to label it if it's a disconnect. Yeah, I'm not worried about that part. Oh, okay. I'm talking about uh, the panel 7 yeah. circuit The six location of the circuit source that supplies the disconnect. It's, it's, one, it's one set of words that says, hey, yeah. you got to tell us the circuit source and Previously, the location of the circuit. Previously, we, we had to identify yeah. the circuit. That's fine. The problem is we have no flipping clue where panel P is at. Right, 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 So right. now we have to figure out where's the panel at on what floor and what room and what's supplying that yeah, yeah, panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And, and so the slide is okay if yep. we're talking about other than dwelling units. Right. Right? Because that it should say other than one and two family dwelling it should units. should say other. Okay? Right. But you're saying, but Mike, so maybe, Brian, what you suggest is I should add another slide before this yeah. that would say the general requirements because this is in addition to, it's like 11016B says in addition to 11016A. Right. You know what I mean? So the two different rules, but yeah, okay. Are we good with this? It almost looks like this needs to be proposed for a change next cycle because previously in the previous codes, we, we had the first sentence, we had the last sentence, and then last cycle we added the circuit source, but we didn't reference the location until this cycle. Yeah. So it looks like it's got a mishmash of changes that mean two different, apply to two different areas, right. and they shouldn't be in the same section. I think it should be A1. And A2. Which is the first sentence. Yeah. Now only covers. And then A2 with a different condition, but it includes that first sentence on the second one. Yeah. Not, you know what I'm saying? In other words, that way, okay, well, if it's A1 is general, applies to everything. Well, two is that if it's other than one, you know, one or two family dwellings, it, 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 it. see, this is a perfect example of, that's our job though, right, guys? I mean, it's not the, not the NFPA for sure. You guys are out there providing the ballpark and the fields <coughs> and the baseballs and everything. I'd like to have fun. We're the ones that are trying to play the games. Well, we, we got to make sure that we establish the rules that we can read them. And this is an example where our job, particularly my, Mario and I's job, anyhow, is in Brian to say, hey, you know what? If we broke that into a per A per N1 and A per N2 and put a little title in there, then we're not going to be like, oh, wait a minute. The first, when I got in the second sentence, but you got to forget, you got to get the. Okay, Dave, I like what you're saying. All right, so we're good. I got a comment, Mike. Yes. So when I read this, and I always have to remind myself this, the title is disconnecting means, not disconnect. Doesn't say knife blade disconnect or non-fuse disconnect, right? The disconnecting means can be a lot of different things. It can be a breaker, yep. certainly. It could be a, a fused knife blade switch, certainly. It could also be a toggle switch with a horsepower rating that you're using as the disconnecting means for the motor. Rooftop exhaust fan, Hold up. good example for that one. I got a toggle switch on the rooftop. It's other than one or two family dwellings. I got to identify what is this a, a disconnecting fan, okay? Oh, it's obvious, so I don't have to it's identify. Obvious. Well, it's obvious. Might, so, might but, not be obvious. But I'm saying, if it were yeah. obvious, going right there, okay, then I don't have to say it's connecting to the fans. I, that was the first sentence, right? Yeah. We talked yeah, about that, that was right? the first sentence. Take it the first sentence. But I'm going to have to say the source, the location of the source. I got that figured out now. And that's going to be panel L, mm -hmm. circuit 12, fourth floor. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. Or 
You take the wires and you short them out. As somebody that's spent. Right. And then you don't worry about it. You figure out, find out that breaker somewhere else. No, not that anybody's do that. done that. Don't do that. Not that I've ever done that. Of course not. You know what I'm just saying? Because I'm Mike Holt, right? Brian, <laughs> edit that out of there. Edit that out. All right, go ahead. As somebody that spent a lot of my, especially the early part of my career doing service work, something like this to me is is really a fantastic change oh that I'm excited about because, oh. that, you know, you're shorting out the wire because nobody has a clue. Nobody. In 10 yeah. years, nobody's ever turned this breaker off. Especially they don't even know where the panel's at. You know, so it's fantastic, yeah. 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 No, I think it's fantastic. I love, I tell you what, I'm going to have to say, I think the code panel members have done a phenomenal job under the direction of the correlated committee of leading and, and, and proving and moving in there. I'll, listen, quality doesn't originate from individuals. It originates from the leadership, the demanding the quality that it takes. And that's, that's clearly what you see going on here.